Thank you, Honourable Mr. Ruth Speaker. Mason. My question is to the Minister of Health. Does he stand by his commitment to move health resources to the front line? The Honourable Tony Ryan. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, this is an important objective, desperately needed, given that over the last nine years the health bureaucracy grew by around 25 per cent and the outgoing Labor government cut $150 million out of the health budget a few weeks before the general election. Uh, Dr Paul Hutchison. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, why is the government so intent on moving resources out of administration and into improving frontline services? The Hon. Tony Ryle. I think, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, our focus is on improving services for patients and consumers. Uh, in the middle of the worst recession since the 1930s, uh, the government has continued to make large investments in the public health service, and it's unacceptable that the health bureaucracy ballooned over the past nine months, and we are endeavouring to peg it back. For example, rather the last nine years, uh, where it's ballooned, it hasn't under the last nine months. For example, the government has cut the number of measures of DHB performance by around a quarter, and we've cut the number of reports hospital staff must send to the Ministry of Health by a startling 52 per cent. Ian Lees Galloway. Will the Minister refuse to sign off on any cuts to frontline services or frontline staff at Mid Central District Health Board, given that he has personally demanded that they find $10 million worth of spending cuts? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, Mid Central is reviewing its staffing. For example, three directors have replaced five group managers on the senior management team. Uh, at Mid Central, we have inherited a major deficit of around $10 million not helped by his party cutting $150 million from Vote Health before the last election. Uh, what, I can, what, I can assure the member, what I can assure the member on the issue of staffing and services at the Mid Central District Health Board is that this government is putting an extra $25 million into that District Health Board for the next 12 months, and they will make decisions within those resources. Chair Curran. Will he agree to cuts to community services to, to the rural elderly in Otago and Southland proposed by the Otago District Health Board? And if so, how does he think those cuts will improve the health for these older people? The oh, Mr. Speaker, uh, District Health Boards are, expecting, uh, are expected to make decisions within the funding that they receive. And in Otago, Southland, wait, wait for this. Wait for this. In Otago Southland, we have increased funding for those DHBs by $29 million over the next year. Uh, on the matter of the Mrs Curran's question, uh, I have received assurances from the District Health Board that with the changes to residential care, no one will be unsafe, no one will be at risk and no one will be unable to stay in their home because of these changes. Grant Robertson. To the Minister, how will the closing of wards at Whanganui Hospital, as reported in the Whanganui Chronicle, help deliver better frontline services for the people of the Whanganui region? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, Mr Speaker, we have inherited very significant problems in the Whanganui District Health Board. After nine, after nine long years at the Whanganui District Health Board, services are in desperate need of improvement, and that is why this government is putting an extra $8.6 million into the Whanganui District Health Board in order for them to do their services for people of their district. Point of order, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, uh, Mr Robertson's question was very specific about the closing of wards at a particular mm. hospital. The Minister gave us a, a political response, that, that's fair enough, but we wanted the specific information about how the closing of certain wards would lead to uh, uh, better health outcomes for the people of Whanganui, and the, the answer went no way into addressing to that. I heard the Minister in answering talk about the additional funding going into the, uh, that he claimed is going into that health board, and, uh, and that seemed to me a reasonable answer to the allegation that wards were being closed. The minister 
replied that actually the government was putting more funding in. So um, it would seem to me that that is a reasonable response to that question. Mr. Speaker, the, Honourable Darren Hughes. The, the Minister may well have um, made reference to general funding, but, but he didn't link it to the closing of wards. This was a very short supplementary question about the closing of specific wards in a certain hospital, and the Minister didn't say that his funding changes somehow were linked to those ward closures. So I, I don't think he's addressed that question. Well, with respect, I think if that's the kind of detail that the member asking the question wants, maybe that needs to be put down in primary question because. Uh, you know, that, that it is fairly unreasonable to expect the Minister to know every detail of every hospital around the country when the primary question, when the primary question does not indicate that kind of uh, detail. I think that is unreasonable. Uh, do we have a further supplementary question? Carmel Speaker, how do the cuts in funding for mental health services in Taranaki deliver on his election promises? Uh, Mr Ryan. Speaker. Uh, the Taranaki District Health Board receives a significant amount of money from the government for which they are to improve their services for the public. And I have to say that the Taranaki District Health Board have done a very good job with their plans on how to spend uh, the additional $11.1 million that this government will be funding them this year, an increase of over 4%. Stuart Nash. Can he guarantee that the reported cutbacks in Tairawhiti District Health Board will not be to frontline services? The Honourable Tony Ryle. Well, well first, uh, Mr. Speaker, well, first of all, that's a rather broad claim of reported cutbacks to services at Tairawhiti. It's much akin to the claims of the opposition health spokesman who keeps talking about cuts to different services which don't actually exist because she looked at the wrong table in the estimates. What I can tell you at Tairafati, Tairafati District Health Board is getting the biggest single increase in funding that they have ever had in years, a total of Tairafati increase of over $8 million. The Honourable Ruth Dyson. Why did he agree? Order, is the member seeking a point of order? I've called the Honourable Ruth Dyson. Oh, is the member calling a point of order? I am, actually. Point of order, Stuart Nash. I did ask that the, he could, if the minister, if he would guarantee there would be no cutbacks to frontline services, and he did not mention the word frontline services once. It was a reasonably general question, Mr Speaker. I think, again, speaking the point of order, the Honourable Cherry Browning. Oh, well, I'm pleased that the opposition think I'm uh, so capable, Mr Speaker, but might I just... Um, uh, suggest that, sir, we're getting a lot of questioning again of answers uh, where, in fact, rather than a point of order being raised, you're being asked to judge the quality of the answer. And we've been over and over for actually probably some hours in this House uh, in the last few months about the, the position that that puts you in. And, sir, I think perhaps some reinforcement with uh, uh, particularly new members of exactly what standing orders uh, say and require and what speakers' rulings have determined over a large number of years would be useful. I thank the Honourable Member <coughs> for his uh, intervention. I think the, my, the, the line I'm taking with, uh, with Ministers answering questions is that where the, where the primary question is clear and the Minister should have the information, I believe the House and the public of New Zealand deserve to have straight questions answered. However, where a general question is the primary question and then it is followed up by a number of detailed questions, it's much more difficult to expect the Minister to have specific information on, that, on those detailed further questions. Basically, in response to the Honourable Member's question, 